Hey guys, iOS 10.3 was released today. Alongside a lot of new features, Apple File System is probably one of the most important. It completely rewrites the way iOS handles your storage. So my one question is, besides the advantage of bringing storage back to iOS, does it bring any speed improvements? So in this video, I wanna run a range of speed tests across every device supported by iOS 10.3. So this goes for the oldest iPhone 5 and to the newest iPhone 7 Plus. So I'm so excited to do this. Let's jump right in. So for the very first test, this is the startup. Over here, we've got the 7 series, the 7 Plus, 6S, and iPhone 6. So the one on the left is running the newer 10.3, the one on the right, 10.2.1, and so on. Anyways, here we go in three, two, one. So they're all connected to the same power bank. And as you guys can see, pretty much starting up some at the same time. But I personally think that 10.3 would start faster because of the optimizations to storage. Oh no, 10.2.1, 10.2.1 over here. And 10.3 is still starting up last, huh? Now on the iPhone 6, 10.3 started up first. Interesting. So overall seems 10.2.1 boots faster on the newer ones on the very, very new devices. And the very same deal for the older devices. So we've got the SE series here, the 5S and iPhone 5. Again, iOS 10.3 is on the left device. There we go, three, two, one, and they're off. So I just wanted to say that iOS 10.3 is probably going to be the very last significant update to iOS 10 before the release of iOS 11. Like last year, 9.3.5 was the last one, so we might see some updates to 10.3, but beyond that, none. Anyways, 10.3 started faster on the SE, which was a little surprising here. So that's kind of cool. On the 5S, which is next, 10.2.1 started faster. And lastly, on the iPhone 5, this is gonna be interesting because this is the last 32-bit iPhone supported. Oh, wow. 10.3 started significantly faster. That's at least five to 10 seconds there. Hmm, I'm liking what I see. Cool, so uh, seems like it's a mixed result. On some older devices, 10.3 is faster. Seems like on most newer devices, 10.2.1 is faster. All right, so let's do some device specific tests. So on the left, 10.3, on the right, 10.2.1, on the slowest device supporting it, which is the iPhone 5. So we'll start with some animations, getting into the device itself. About exactly the same here, control center. Oh, some major lag there on the left. And that's just about the same spotlight. 10.3 seems to take that one. Um, this one, pretty much the same. And the app switcher, one, two. Oh, 10.2.1 loaded that faster, one, two. Yep, and let's open up and close some apps. So settings seems to load a tad bit quicker in 10.3. Wow, but the closing animation is definitely a little bit faster. So App Store, and this is a web-based app, so it doesn't really speak too much for the uh, performance of the app so much as the Wi-Fi, but 10.2.1 loaded that one faster. And the camera, one, two. Oh, just about the same. It seemed to have lagged, but nope, about the same there. So that's the iPhone 5. Wouldn't say there's really much of a detriment, if any difference at all, on the performance. So this is the 5S, the one that has Touch ID with the screen off. Let's go ahead and click it. Actually, literally exactly the same. And with the screen on. Oh, 10.3. So let's try that again. One, two. Yeah, 10.3 with the screen on seems to unlock faster. Interesting. And the UI elements, let's try Notification Center. Hmm. Control center, the spotlights, this one and this one. So both pretty hesitant right there. App switcher, one, two. Oh, 10.2.1, one, two. Hmm, interesting. So pretty close on this one, too. Let's try settings. Exact the same amount of time. So seems like there's not much of a difference in the animations, although they do look a little prettier on iOS 10.3. They close. Uh, with a more rounded shape, they seem to perform exactly the same. This is the SE Touch ID test. Uh, about the same. Man, I really thought there would be more of a difference, especially on the older devices here. But let's try it again. One, two. Uh, a little hesitant there. And let's try it with the screen off. Sorry, I don't have a power button on this one. Anyways, so screen on, I mean. One, two, three. So actually literally about the same. Control center. Same notification center, same spotlight. 
just about the same. App Switcher, very, very similar here. So if you guys were worried about updating to a 10.3 on an older device, even though this is the SE, it seems like there's really no negative effect. So settings, one, two, same, same closing speed even. Let's try the app switcher, about the same camera. Oh, I just forgot this one's not plugged in. Uh, but there you go. So the SE, just about the same, the closest between the both of them that I've seen. iPhone 6, one, two. Oh, 10.3 seems to be faster there. Uh, once again, with the screen off, one, two. This time is a little closer. And screen on. Yeah, exactly the same there. Control center, whoa, what is going on there? Notification center, just about the same. Spotlight, both pretty good. And the app switcher, one, two, just about the same. Settings, 10.3 loaded that a fraction of a second slower. App switcher, just about the same. So man, what a close test between both of these. 10.3 is a little slower here. So the iPhone 6, same again. The iPhone 6S, starting with the Touch ID test screen off, one, two, three. Same screen on, one, two, three. Very, what? This is literally like a mirror copy here. So control center, notification center, spotlight. Ooh, very, very responsive here. So the newer devices, the closer it seems to be from 10.2 to 10.3. Let's try the app switcher, one, two. Very, very similar here. Clear all of this up and jump into settings. Same, same, one, oh, 10.3 loaded that one faster. That's the 6S, very fast, nothing really to report. And the one I've been waiting to see, this is on the 7 Plus, which is my daily driver. I'm very curious here how uh, it differentiates on the newer firmware. So screen off, touch ID, three, two, one. Mm -hmm. mirrored pretty much identical screen on one two three yeah so literally no difference there control center and notification center just about the same spotlight yeah there's like no difference here uh app switcher one two Ooh, 10.3 has some sort of lag settings same app store just about oh 10.3 is a fraction of a second faster camera 10.3 loaded that significantly faster wow all right so that is the iphone 7 plus so on a ui animation level really there is almost no difference i would go as far as to say that it's exactly the same so apple doesn't seem to have made any changes there but let's get to a more technical level and see what kind of scores we can get from geekbench and antutu i just really want to see if there is a difference between these devices whatsoever i mean the storage itself is great I think these are the same size devices. So let's see what the difference in storage is. So yeah, both are 128 gigs. And look at that, on iOS 10.3, the capacity went up to 124 from 121. So iOS itself has shrunk in size, giving you a lot of storage back. So let's get technical here and see the numbers. All right, and here are the Geekbench 4 scores. Actually pretty surprised. iOS 10.3 does very, very well. Seems like on all but a couple devices, the multi-core score is higher. Single core is okay, pretty much almost the same in most areas. So 7 Plus, not that significantly higher on the iPhone 6S, also very, very close. iPhone 6 is a little bit lower, multi-core. Uh, going all the way down to the iPhone 5, the multi-core is a lot lower than the other ones. So overall on the iPhone 5, I would say 10.3 is a downgrade uh, from all of these tests that we've run. So overall pretty close, but there's one more a test I wanted to run, and that's the Antutu benchmark that tests GPU performance as well. And here's Antutu, so a little hard to see, but significantly lower on the newer devices. So this one's 10,000 below, this one's about uh, 14, 13,000 below. On the older devices, the scores are just about the same. So Antutu seems to report that graphics performance is lower on 10.3. All right, guys, so there it is, iOS 10.3. The conclusion I have achieved at the end of this video is essentially that iOS 10.3 is almost indistinguishable when it comes to performance from iOS 10.2.1. The actual speed improvements are non-existent. The animations may look nicer, but that doesn't mean they're faster or anything like that. So performance-wise on animations, exactly the same. System performance, 
Uh, the numbers from Geekbench are pretty much saying it's almost exactly the same, maybe a little bit slower. The only device I can tell at all that becomes slower is the iPhone 5, and that's to be expected. It's the oldest, it's 32 bit, it's the slowest, so it seems to be affected the most by 10.3. Overall, you guys can update without worry if you were thinking about the performance. Battery life is a whole nother question, but if anything, Apple has been working to make improvements on the unexpected shutdown issues, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Anyways, there it is, guys. iOS 10.3. Not much faster, not much slower, not much of anything. Peace.